You're not going to believe this. The bloody headlining's had to come out, hasn't it? probably thinking, but Matt, you've only just put the headlining back in. You checked it wasn't leaking, the sunroof. Why have you taken it out? Well, the sunroof decided that it got halfway and didn't want to go anymore. And then I think the problem is just the runners, but I want to access the back runners and clean everything out properly. But there is no condensation. And to make sure that there's definitely no condensation, I had the dehumidifier running in here yesterday and it actually took out 300 millilitres of water. And I think I figured out why you get condensation in the car with the sunroof. And that is because when your park's level, these channels are all quite level. So, Water will only drain off when it gets to when there's a certain amount of water in there. So when you do water does seep in, it's not really going to actually go to the drains that much unless you get a lot of downpour. And then obviously it's all going to run off down the drains. Otherwise, if your part's flat like this, the water that gets in there is just only going to sit on the drains, on the actual guttering and never drain. So ideally, parking on a slight angle maybe on a curb so it goes to one side it will then run down a corner or run down the rear corner or parking but then if you park too much from a steep angle and then it does rain really hard it's going to overflow out of the channels here and then into your interior anyway my conclusion is don't have a car with a sunroof but what a nightmare having to take all of that out because i jumped the gun and I should have checked, made sure that the sunroof opened first before putting the headlining back in. Because previously I'd only opened the sunroof up and down, never retracted it. And then as soon as I retracted it, it decided it didn't want to work. Right, so I've been looking around and it's quite clear, it's quite wet in and around underneath. So the seal, that sunroof seal, is actually weeping and it's letting water pass. Um, so yes, I do need to replace it, but I'm not going to do that now. It would make sense to do it now while all the headline is out. So while the headlining is out, it would make sense to uh, to change that seal right now. But as it is, um, for 140 odd pound, I think it is from the main dealers, um, it's a lot of money for that little bit of rubber. Uh, Volkswagen, if you want to, <laughs> if you want to sort me out, Volkswagen, and help me out. <laughs> Uh, that would be great but what I'm going to do is I'm going to lube up all these little points in here um, first of all it's this, this little bit of plastic here needs to come off and the plastic is actually locked in like that so there's actually a little clip here and if you pull that clip this will then slide away and then where these little um, cutouts are there's three of them on the back of them I have one here these little lips so you can see i don't know how well i can do it it has a little lip and you just need to lift it up so i'm using this angled one and i can get in underneath from behind like that and then just lift it up so that's how i got this side off and we can see straight away all this area in here that's um that's very thick grease and it shouldn't be that thick on here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wipe all this grease off and then we're going to lube everything up. So all these channels, that little runner up in there needs lubing up. Um, up here needs lubing. And then the runners as well, we'll spray a little bit of lube in there as well. But what I will be using is silicon, a silicon based lube.
So I've gone ahead and removed that plastic cover that was over that bit there. You can see it there covering up that rail. Quite easy to take off. Let's have a look, here it is. It's popped in. So it goes on that way. So you've got two poppers at the front, which line up into those holes. One there, one there, one there. I could go ahead, take the sunroof out now. Got three torque, I think there's T25s, maybe T30s, I can't see. Um, but yeah, again, you can see there's a lot more of that thick grease all along there. And thick grease is definitely not what you want on your sunroof, which is why it might have been clogging it up and stopping the, uh, the function properly of the sunroof. So once I've got all of this lubed up, cleaned out, we lube it all up and then I'm gonna have to get the talcum powder out and see if we can reseal it all. So I used the old WD-40 specialist, bit of silicon. Yeah, lubed up as much as I can. And now uh, we'll close the sunroof and then move it back and see what happens, see if more needs to be lubed. Right, well that's a bit of an awkward angle, but there is a runner right there, the rear runner, two of them, which is why we've had to take out all the headlining just to get to the back of these ones, which I should have actually done the first time when I actually had the headlining out. I didn't even think about cleaning these gutters. So I've cleaned out these little narrow ones on the top here and the bigger one next to it. There's also another one right over the other side, but that's the water channel. Yeah, so there was quite a bit of grease and debris and dirt in there, making it all gritty and grimy. So I'm now gonna spray it up with some of that WD, the old uh, silicon specialist. We'll spray that up, lube it up, um, move it backwards and forwards a few times. I'm going to repeat the process until, because at the moment you can hear the grit as it's going back. So hopefully, cleaning it a few more times, moving it backwards and forwards, keep on lubing it in between, and eventually it should be free. So just using some soapy water and a cloth, I've been going round cleaning the seal. So I'm gonna clean it in this position, I'll then lower it, move it back, and try and clean as much as I can around that front area. Now once it's all fully clean and dry, Good old talcum powder. It doesn't have to be imperial leather. A bit of paper towel. I'll put some talcum powder on and paper towel. And then we'll just go around all the edge and just talc everything up. So it was going all so well. Got everything cleaned out. Lubed everything up going backwards and forwards, seemed a lot better. Still sounds like there's a little bit of grit in there, so I carried on cleaning it. Um, backwards and forwards, it was getting better and better and better until it was working fine. And then it didn't want to go at all. Every time I went to move the switch, it would just go eh, and then stop. So, <laughs> I completely forgot that the battery on this thing uh, does need replacing. So, uh, yeah, I do need to get a new battery. And I think this cold weather really, 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 really isn't helping at all. So what's actually happened is the battery's died. So the sunroof wouldn't go backwards or forwards. So I had to get the key out and I've actually done it manually. And mate, this motor has got to work quite hard because there's quite a lot of force you've got to put in to actually move it backwards and forwards and up and down. and But I think we're all good. I can't show you, because I need a new battery. And I went to start it with my jump pack and I haven't charged my jump pack either because I used it this morning, jumping this. And then 
you know, you should really charge it in between because it's an old one that I've got and oh, everything just needs replacing. Right, well, it is all working now, the sunroof, so the headlining can go back in. Um, I guess once I get the headlining back in, we'll spin it around and we'll have a look at the pollen filter and make sure that that's not letting water in because there's no condensation in the car at all, as you can see. Um, there was only a slight little bit this morning on the bottom of the windscreen by the dash. So I think the only moisture left in the vehicle is in that area somewhere. And it's definitely not the air con drain because we've checked that. Um, it's not, it can't be the matrix. I mean, it could be the matrix slowly weeping, but the pressure of it, you'd have thought it blow through at some point and it's, you should, you, well, you would start getting steam coming out your vents and, but I've got none of that. There's no telltale signs of the matrix being gone. I mean, you can't smell coolant in here or anything. So I'm, I'm hoping it is just that pollen filter. Um, and then, yeah, that'll be for next time though. I've also got loads of work to get on with with the T4. So I'm waiting for, well, trying to find out what I can do with some, uh, with the vents. We need to fix that up as well. The T4, joys, I've got to get back on it. Right, I need to carry on, um, but we're going to call it a day here. I'm going to crack on, get the headlining back in, get the battery charged up, get everything sorted out so that we can get the car, turn it around and start on the pollen filter, stripping that out. Right, thank you very much for watching. Take care, stay safe and God bless. It's like one of those football things, isn't it? Used to have back in the day. My granddad had one of them. <laughs>